One of the biggest carriers of both crude oil and refined products is the modern tanker, which with speed and economy can deliver its cargo to any port in the seven seas where it may be needed. Since the 1950s, giant super tankers have moved oil all over the world. With time, the tankers have become more efficient and technologically advanced. But one thing hasn't changed. The friction that occurs when the boat's hull comes in contact with the water creates drag. If the drag didn't exist, the boat would certainly move faster and arrive at its destination sooner. Some common sense can always say, well, if you can put air in between boat and the water, you can go faster. That's pretty common sense, pretty obvious. The problem is nature does not allow this air layer to stay in between the surface, solid surface, boat surface, and the water. The air will become bubbles and just leak. Chang Jin Kim is a professor of mechanical and aerospace technology at UCLA. In this lab, Kim and his team are using nanotechnology to create a material they hope will make the outer surfaces of boats truly water resistant. Eventually, my dream is to cover the, the oil tanker. The technology is partially inspired by something considerably smaller. This British water bug, known as the back swimmer. Like many things uh, in engineering, Initially, you learn from science or nature. They have microscopic hair, and each hair is actually like a Teflon. They repel water. But they are surviving only a few centimeters below the water. And our job is to go much below that. For now, Kim and his team are starting small, testing samples of material incorporating a surface laden with microscale roughness, engineered to create the layer of separation between the boat and the water. Those who may remember some uh, junior high school uh, science may remember the electrolysis. The surface is basically uh, have its internal battery in it so that when the water goes in there, it automatically starts electrolysis. We'll first put the water droplets on it and show that water just get repelled. It doesn't really uh, wet the surface. And, but eventually, it should be immersed under the water. When you immerse it into the water and take it out, you'll see it comes out completely dry. If the technology can be applied to gigantic oil tankers and cargo ships, it could both speed up travel times and reduce energy costs. According to the UN, oceanic shipping accounts for nearly 10% of the global oil supply. If less oil is required for these voyages, the technology could have an immediate impact on the economy and the environment. Pretty much all the fundamental problems out there we already solved. So now the problem is how to make them to cover large area cheap enough that it becomes commercially viable.